So good evening, everybody, and welcome to another Portugalist webinar. This one is going to be on renting in Portugal. It's something that I get a lot of questions about from people, um, understandably, because for many people, it's their first time renting in a long time. We know that uh, rentals are needed for visas like the D7 and the D8. And if you're applying for the D7 as a retiree, you might have been a homeowner for uh, quite a number of decades. And this is the first time in a long time that you're renting. Moreover, you're renting in a country that you've never lived in before. So understandably, you have a lot of questions. And um, that's definitely the case here. I think we have probably about 40 or 50 questions that people have sent in. So Hopefully, we'll be able to get through them all. Um, but thankfully, I am joined by two very, very knowledgeable people from Pearls of, Portu uh, Pearls of Portugal, sorry, um, Elena and Frederick, who are going to answer all of these questions. Um, perhaps uh, we could start just sort of learning a little bit about Pearls of Portugal, uh, what you do in general, and what you specifically offer in terms of uh, rentals. I know you have some information prepared on this. Correct. Hi, uh, James. Hi, everyone. Uh, happy to be here and, and to help to answer to all of your questions. Um, just uh, going to share here our uh, presentation. I hope you can, uh, everyone can, can see it. Um, so, um, as already James uh, told us, uh, told you, uh, Pearls of Portugal, um, I'm the real estate director, uh, Elena Castro, and joining here at this webinar, we have uh, Frederick Paul. Um, he's a, a, the founder of Pearls of Portugal, our CEO, uh, is a German um, that uh, came to, to Portugal um, several years ago and also knows very well uh, the yeah. market. I didn't come to Portugal. It was probably my, I went to Portugal 2004, met my wife. Um, that was also the, the beginning a little bit of Pearls of Portugal because um, the idea for Pearls of Portugal um, came out of my own experience because my wife and I, we purchased our first home and uh, I was kind of glad to have a, a native speaker with me and after the entire process, I was like, okay, thanks God, everything went well and good to have you within the process as a native speaker. And she was like, I was kind of clueless too. Uh, you look kind of smart. So that was the idea. I started with a blog. Um, it was oriented, I'm, as I'm German, first of all, to to, to German customers or to German um, users. Um, and out of the idea to help then uh, grew the, the parts of Portugal that we have today. Good. Thank you. Um, also talking a little bit about our mission, as already uh, Frederick explained you the, the idea uh, of, of founding um, Pros of Portugal. Our mission is to help the foreigners with a step to Portugal and we offer uh, um, a big portfolio of uh, uh, services. Um, our main uh, services are the buyer's agent, so buying and renting uh, services, and then all along, like uh, you said, James, uh, helping people to apply for uh, any kind of visa, and then everything that also includes the move to Portugal, uh, such as uh, uh, the Portuguese tax number, insurances, uh, pets, car import. So uh, we can help you with uh, all of these um, main things that uh, uh, when you move uh, to other country can be a little bit uh, challenging and having having someone here to, to help, it's always uh, good. Um, talking about a little bit what we are going to, um, um, the theme of this uh, webinar, the rental market um, at Portugal, um, this year, um, properties had increased a little bit, um, as you can see in this uh, presentation, uh, Porto and uh, Lisboa suffer a little bit of increase um, this um, beginning of this year. Um, one of the main reasons are uh, the, um, the increase of the demand and the lack of uh, offer. Uh, so uh, keeps the, the prices increase a little bit. Um, other cities like uh, Coimbra and Viseu uh, get attention as well from, from people from other countries um, to Portugal. I believe that one of the main reasons uh, of Coimbra, it's the proximity from Porto and uh, Lisboa. 
uh, and Viseo that uh, in terms of uh, life quality, uh, it's also very, very good. The other uh, districts, when you go more to Leiria or more uh, inland, uh, the prices didn't increase too much. Um, also, it's, it's a little bit out of the big cities and um, the districts are not also very known um, outside uh, Portugal, but this is something that we can also help uh, in the future explaining um, the pros and cons of each uh, district. Um, there's a other theme that uh, we have received a lot of uh, questions about this. Uh, you learn what it's a T0, what it's a T1. I don't know what, it's, uh, what it is. Uh, so uh, we try to explain here uh, what it's a T0. Normally it's a studio. So all the, the, the social area and as well, the part of the bedroom, it's all included in one division. And then you have the separate um, bathroom. Uh, when we are talking about the T1, a T1 already has a social area separated from, from the, the bedroom um, area. So you have a specific uh, room, a bedroom in this case, and then you have uh, the kitchen. It also happens the same when we are talking about the two bedroom uh, property. Um, has two bedrooms separate from the social area um, that you can um, use. Um, also, one of the main questions is what is a T1 plus one? It's, uh, it's also uh, um, easy to explain. Uh, T1, it's a one bedroom, as explained. When we are talking a plus one, it's normally a, a smaller uh, room. It's not considered as a bedroom. It's a room that uh, could or could not have uh, a window. So this is what differs normally from um, what they consider a bedroom, okay? Um, they have some. I have some some tips here uh, when you are planning to rent uh, a property in in Portugal. Uh, it's important that you have your budget um, defined um, and see how much you can how much you can spend. This can be also helpful when you, you are planning to define a region. Okay, so uh, if you have uh, five hundred euros, six hundred euros to spend uh, uh, monthly on the rental month, maybe Porto and Lisboa could not be very easy to to find uh, property there. So it's good for you to have a budget already defined and then it's going to help you to define um, the region, okay? Uh, in terms of research, there's several uh, platforms that you can uh, uh, search. Uh, the most famous, um, everyone I believe knows that it's uh, Idealista, uh, that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's well known as well, uh, but sometimes uh, um, properties that you can see in the Idealista in the disappear uh, and you need to find in other uh, platforms uh, so that you have access to uh, um, a more range of uh, properties. Then visit the properties, see the properties. Uh, it's very important for you to read the contract very carefully because it's very important to have a very defined contract with all the clauses and reread the clauses. Uh, if you have help from a lawyer or for someone that understands the rules in Portugal, it's very helpful for you to define um, a very... Um, um, thorough contract that it's the most important part on on the rental uh, to negotiate it's very complicated to negotiate nowadays but there's always something that you can negotiate or the furniture or something um, that you can uh, you can negotiate uh, with uh, with the landlords other thing that it's very important it's that uh, when a uh, rental contract it's already registered in finances or the tax authority uh, you always will receive a uh, receipt okay when uh, you pay the rent the landlord needs to uh, give you a receipt that you paid and it's it's already paid um you need to be aware of your uh, rights, uh, having a, a copy of the contract. The contract can be signed virtually, but I always advise you for you to have an original copy of the contract signed uh, by you and uh, uh, the landlord. Um, other important thing that uh, you need to, to remember on this case, and there's a lot of uh, situations that I've heard from, from our clients, is that uh, you're uh, from abroad, you don't understand the language, so to pay attention to this type of uh, situations, okay? 
Um, also, the documentation, it's very important. Some of the landlords or the owners don't have the documentation updated and it's mandatory that they have the documentation updated. But uh, from from the tenant's uh, side, uh, some of the things that uh, you need to uh, take care that it's the Portuguese uh, tax number. Without that, I used to say that without that, you don't do anything in Portugal. So that it's a very important step. Um, a valid uh, ID, a proof of uh, address, a uh, guarantor. Uh, if you don't have it, we can we can help you to find other things and other uh, conditions for you to to be able to get the rental contract. Uh, the proof of employment. Uh, if you are self-employed, uh, we can also see. Uh, how we can handle with uh, with the landlord and of course the bank account uh, not so much of uh, having to pay the rent so you can pay the rent from from other uh, bank accounts from from uh, abroad uh, but will be important in the future for the utilities and to have a Portuguese bank account uh, settled okay um in terms of the rental contract, uh, we prepare here, it's more or less a template, uh, what it's important for you to have uh, in a rental contract. Of course, the identification from the landlord and the tenant, a description of the property that needs to uh, be the same as the documentation of the, the property for you to make sure what, what you're renting it. Um, so the time of the, the contract, uh, how much is the rent, security deposit. So all of this information uh, will be important for you to have in your uh, rental contract. Other thing that will be important is the majority of the uh, rentals don't have utilities included, but some of the cases can uh, have that uh, included. So if it is included, um, it's important to be in the contract. Okay. Um, and how you can finish the contract in terms of the landlord and the tenants. Uh, you have, uh, you need to, the landlord needs to say um, how much time in advance and uh, the tenants uh, as well. In terms of our services, what Pearls of Portugal can, can help, uh, we can help um, in making a property research, uh, schedule the, the appointments. Uh, we can go with you uh, to the to the viewings uh, to make sure that everything is it's correct. Also to have uh, two more eyes when, when you're making the, the viewings. Uh, we can assist you as well with a rental contract. As I said, it's very, very important. Um, and other services that, uh, that you might need in the future, such as utilities, you need some cleaning, you need some furniture. Um, we can help you uh, on that. In case you're not able to come to Portugal to make the viewings, we can make virtual tours. And uh, we can make a, we can send you the pin of the Google Maps for you to see where it's located, for you to see the surroundings, so that uh, you can understand fully what are you renting it. Okay. Um, Maybe one we also... uh, one important point is um, we're acting as a bias agent, so we never uh, offer our own properties. Um, so it's always out of the market and we do the entire search for you. So what Ella just described, it's a package that we offer from the search to the end until you have utilities and maybe you need somebody to to water the flowers or clean or help you with the 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 the, the clothes and so on. So it's a it's a package that you offer as a bias agent. Correct. Yes. Um other um thing that we can we can offer you we launch our client area uh, the idea of the client area it's uh, to have everything in one place uh, so uh, when you're making the property research uh, we can uh, um, send you the the properties on this client area where you can select the ones that you like what you don't like uh, your favorite ones when we are scheduling the the viewings uh, you can see um, the the schedule so the timeline so that you can be always uh, updated in the future uh, we will upload there the contract, all the documentation, so that in the future, if you need, imagine to make an insurance uh, on the on your belongings uh, or something in the in the house that if you want to to proceed, you already have all the information uh, there. And as well, uh, like you said, James, in the beginning, if you want to apply uh, for any kind of uh, visa, uh, all the information is going to be there, and also the process of the the visa, so that you can you can be always uh, updated. 
and uh, and to understand how the process is going because we understand that being abroad and not knowing what is happening could be a little bit uh, um, challenging. So uh, that's why we developed this uh, uh, client area from from Pearls of Portugal. And here it's uh, the final uh, slide. I uh, have all the the information, uh, our website, uh, how we can uh, how we can meet, how we can talk, and um, that's it. So, thank you for this time, James. Thank you so much. That's really really helpful and so informa uh, so useful to learn all of that. I definitely did not know what a T zero and a T one was when I first came to Portugal. It's um I think it is the terminology is used in some other uh, European countries, but not all of them. So I I can see why people are confused. Um, I wanted to let people know that we have a Q&A section, um, which you should be able to see in your Zoom console. It's best to ask questions in there just because it's easier to keep on track of them. Um, we do also have the chat, which a lot of people are using, um, but it's easier to, for us if you ask the questions in there. It also means that afterwards, anything that's not answered, um, I can send over to Pearls of Portugal and they can get back to you. And I also wanted to let you know that um, very kindly, Frederick and Elena have offered to um, give uh, people a free consultation if they're thinking about renting in Portugal. Um, I'll share the link in the chat, uh, which you can use, and I'll also send it out in an email after this. Just simply mention that you saw the Portugalist webinar and you would like to take advantage of this. Um, one question I did see there uh, pop up, or actually, um, at least one anyway i'll ask you is do you cover everywhere in portugal yes it's a i mean it's a small country um yeah. i saw that a lot of people are, <laughs> are from the united states um yes. i would use the term nationwide but we all um it's independently if you would like to rent in, in lisbon at, at the algaf um in tier regions we cover uh, all portugal yeah. headquarter though is in, in porto and um, lots of people are asking very specific questions there. So we will try to answer as many of them as possible, but definitely booking that consultation call um, would be the way to go. Um, you mentioned Idealista there, which um, some people will have heard of and some people won't have. Aside from that, are there other sites that you recommend people use and how um, how big is uh, are they in comparison to Idealista? Yeah, that, I mean, Idealist is uh, the biggest platform. Um, the I think the best sources um, are the realtors themselves, um, because a lot of, a lot of, I mean, it, it's a process. They 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 meet new clients, and in the process of publishing them, if it really hits Idealista, they already pass probably some hands. Um, Idealist. Um, you have around fifty thousand maybe offers uh, on Idealista per, per per in online, so it's not really an online market uh, in terms of platforms. It's very realtor driven and also social media because there's a shortage. A lot of people uh, post things on social media groups, um, housing Lisbon, housing Porto, and um, that's also um, um, way make good deals. Yeah, so uh, it's a it's a. For example, if you purchase, basically everything is now online. Uh, but uh, to search for property to rent, you have to be a bit more um, flexible. Uh, but the the realtor check Idealista and other platforms, but also check social media groups in the city that you would like to rent. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people watching this will be thinking about renting without having visited Portugal first. Um, and ideally, they'd like to get something like a video walkthrough of the apartment. Is there a way that you can find which companies are likely to offer this or which private landlords are likely to offer this? Or that just ask? Um, yeah, that's not a specific uh, thing that uh, there are some some uh, agencies that uh, already offer that, uh, but more when you like to buy, uh, when okay. you're um, searching for properties to, to rent, um, the best thing is to, to contact them or if you have someone uh, in Portugal that uh, can go to the to the property and make a video, uh, that is going to be uh, the best way, but it's not um, a straightforward 
thing that you that you can see it especially when you want to 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 rent uh you can find more of that when when you want to buy yeah i mean it's more common these days but um the worst thing is to do because i saw this also in the question or people when we talk to, to clients they complain if you're on a platform and you fill out the standard form um i'd like to visit this property in most cases, you don't even get a, uh, an answer back, especially if it's a wanted property. So if you would like to organize a viewing, you have to call, you have to contact the, the, the realtors directly. Um, I don't want to, I mean, not talk about bad list on these platforms, but um, if it's really good property, they're going to get a lot of contact. It's not badly intended, but um, they're just getting practical and probably will not answer your, your contacts. No. Okay. And... In terms of um, pet-friendly rentals, this is something that I get asked about a lot. Um, it, first of all, how do you find a pet-friendly rental? Is this something they're going to say we accept pets or we don't accept pets? Yeah, when, when you're searching on the ads, if you're searching online, you can see some of the ads that are going to say that uh, they will not allow uh, pets. Um, but in general it's it will de depend a little bit uh, what kind of pet that you have yes. uh, if you have uh, two big dogs and uh, 10 cats um or if you have uh, a bird or if you have a turtle maybe this uh, this could be uh, feasible but only talking with uh, with the landlord and the owner um case by case we can we can see it um but of course if you have uh, a big dog uh, also for for the dog i don't advise you to have a small apartment but something with a terrace uh, with a balcony something that uh, um will allow the pets uh, to have some some space as well uh, to use um but you don't have something that it's okay. Uh, this is a pet friendly. It, this is not. Um, it's it's case by case, honestly. Okay, and in the um, the US, just because we've got a lot of US listeners, people um, may have uh, what they call like service dogs or emotional support animals, dogs that are given a little more um, special treatment. And that is it, is this recognized at all in Portugal? You have some some laws on that, and uh, the landlords can can accept on on that on that those cases because uh, that types of dogs uh, they are very well behaved, and the idea is to help uh, those people. Um, but again, it's something that you need to to, um, to talk with directly with the owner or with a, with a landlord, and um, and to see if it's uh, possible. Um, it's not something that it's uh very recognized unfortunately in 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 portugal uh, they have some some laws regarding to to that um but, uh, the landlord can can not accept that in that case the same okay now another um fairly us based uh question is um credit scores in the us people have um scores which show how um sort of recommendable they are i guess to to landlords um portugal as far as i know doesn't really have this um system and certainly doesn't recognize international ones because it because it doesn't exist there however if i have something in the us that says you know i've got a really high credit score i always pay my bills on time will this help me in portugal and is it worth sort of submitting this yeah probably everything will help that you can submit if you can prove that i'm a, I'm a good tenant but it's not something they will specifically request for. Um, they would like to know if you're financially uh, capable of paying the rent. And that's something I would like to see. Um, you usually have to uh, turn in some some salary. Um, what do you call it? Stops? No. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, um, that's more important. So, um, if you um, then uh, probably then don't even know what it is. So uh, because it's not so common um, in other countries in Europe, you have it. Um, and there's also not a standard from that you always have to bring this. Um, this really depends on on the on the landlord, but salary. Right. Or, no. Yes, and something that can also help. Uh, it's like a, a letter of why are you moving to to Portugal and why do you want to to leave here and these type of things uh, can also be 
um, helpful. It's not uh, something that uh, the Portuguese landlords will recognize the, the credit score um, and uh, the letter, but uh, explaining uh, why are you moving to Portugal, a little bit of uh, your story uh, can also be, be very helpful, especially when you are uh, self-employed, for example, um, and you, you don't have... Uh, um, work contracts or pay slips or anything um, can also be helpful. But like Fedrit said, this uh, this is not very uh, recognizable in Portugal. That's probably a relief for a lot of people, though, who might maybe think I'm moving to Portugal and now <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have a credit score of zero. Um, I would be thinking that if I was moving to the US, US, oh, no, I have to build up this credit score and life's going to be hard. It's, it's nice to know that that doesn't exist in um, Portugal in many ways. Um, but the, uh, that doesn't mean that it's always necessarily um, a level playing field for for renting. If you're new here, like you said, it's it's always good to have a sort of a personal story and why you've moved. Some people get asked for a um, a guarantor. Could you explain a little bit what that is and what you should do if you don't have someone in Portugal who could be your guarantor? Uh, guarantor, it's uh, someone that um, uh, will take responsibility if you don't pay uh, your rent. Um, and uh, if you don't have a guarantor, if you're coming to, to Portugal and don't know anyone, um, there's a, there's some um, options that, uh, that you can consider. Uh, some of the landlords can uh, request more months as a deposit. Uh, you can also ask your bank if it can be they call it, uh, um, um, how should I say this? Um, it's a type of guarantee uh, that the bank can 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 have. Um, imagine that like you the credit have, card. Well, if you reserve, for example, a car, they can block an amount, and that's something you can also get from the bank. That they, I don't know, you have a uh, balance of ten thousand euros, you need to block four thousand euros to 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 guarantee uh, this money. So they block it for you, and they give the certificate then to the to the to, to the, the bank. Yeah. Yeah. To the bank. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah, to um, and then in terms of um, uh, deposits, what's a sort of um, typical deposit? Of um, Obviously, that varies depending on how much that's going to cost. But would it be one month's rent or two months rent? Or is there a general pattern for this? Okay, so in terms of uh, deposits, uh, normally it's uh, two months, uh, or by law, normally it's uh, two months, okay? What the landlords are requesting at this moment, it's a two plus two. What this means, it's two rents in advance, that it's the first, normally it's the first rent and the last rent of the contract, plus two months as a deposit. It's not something that it's... Uh, uh, needs to be like this. No, it's the what the, the landlord can request. It's the maximum of uh, uh, two rents. What they can request as well, in, in case you don't have a guarantor, it's more months in advance, okay? Uh, but normally uh, the typical uh, deposit, it's two months and considering that you're going to pay in advance two months, so two plus two. Okay. And I see a couple of questions coming in from people who are retired and they're wondering what documentation they would show to um, show their, their income coming from sort of a pension or social security. Exactly. Well, social security pension, um, proof that you're receiving a retirement income, That that's basically enough. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, now you um, obviously have a service which you which you gave us an introduction to earlier. Um, what would sort of be the pros and cons of of using something like Pearls in Portugal versus going to um, a landlord directly and tr or trying to find a rental yourself? Well, it's a service. Um, I think there are three main advantages. First of all, we will definitely find more. Um, we also crawl the the, the online market. Um, um, compared to, to buying, it's not so strong. But anyway, um, we find everything that's not just on a platform. Or, uh, we grow all the platforms, all the, the realtors. Um, but we also search in, in, in this uh, social media. And also, if we know the area, uh, we will also uh, contact the, uh, the realtors directly. I think we have a strong also uh, advantage in enabling the rentals because a lot of people call, they don't answer they don't call back. Um, 
we call we call them in Portuguese. Um, so uh, we realize the viewing. So in a way, we also make it happen. Um, sounds sim uh, simple, but it, um, it, it sometimes it's also difficult to do this from abroad. Um, and definitely, we make it safer. First of all, we have the experience. We're doing this now for over 10 years. Um, and we always engage also lawyers. So um, that's part of the, 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 the package that we offer. We work with external lawyers and the, they, they check the contracts. Um, the best way we do it, uh, they do their own contract or we do the Pearls contract or um, they check the contract that the, the landlords um, present. Huh? Perfect. I think um, a lot of people underestimate just how valuable it is to have someone who's actually going to phone up in Portuguese, because um, sending an, an email and especially sending an email in English automatically sort of decreases the likelihood that you are going to get an answer in these sort of situations. So that is really, really um, valuable. Um, and then a lot of people want to know about how they might be vetted as a potential renter. Um, how do landlords look at sort of applications from people and sort of size up who they want to move in? I believe that uh, um, the landlords, first of all, the landlords cannot vet or discriminate any type of tenants, okay? Um, nothing we do with the country, uh, race, um, anything, okay? So it's it's very important for, for people to, to know it. Then it will depend a little bit of the the landlord. Um, they will confirm most likely uh, the financial situation first. What the, what it's the type, and we go back a little bit. Uh, what what it's your idea? Why are you coming to to Portugal? Uh, how many months you want to stay? Uh, you can be a landlord that uh, want to to rent for uh, uh, three years, five years, and uh, you're saying, okay, I just need a, a one year rental, and this could be a um, potentially a vet from, from the landlord. Um, but they don't have general rule. Uh, people are different, landlords are, are di very different, and um, that could be one of the, could be situations like, like that. I think a general advice, which is a little bit, a bit broad, more broadened, in Portugal, you solve a, a lot of things by communication. Um, sounds simple, but it's not. For example, if you look for, I don't know, uh, uh, somebody can help you uh, in the house, or you like to, like a craftsman to to um, to to renovate the the house. The best way is to maybe go to a cafe and ask. Okay, you know somebody. Okay, I have this problem, or need somebody to help with the cleaning. Um, if you look at the online market, you you hardly find this kind of information for Portuguese people correct me if I'm wrong but it's very important communication the trust in people to get a, the feeling so not just in this case also in terms of pet and all this kind of things um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, securities you have to bring is always a, a communication issue so people have to trust you um, it's more important to, to, to be trusted in a conversation than to send maybe a full uh, three page uh, presentation of yourself um, because I think it's valued less in the Portuguese society. It's really interaction, calling, calling the realtors, calling the the, the landlords, presenting yourself, uh, making an impression, also issues. Um, don't rent an if you have an issue, for example, with the landlords, call him. You know, talk to him. Don't send an an email about your complaint and everything written which might be normal uh, for example in germany or the yes, but everything is more formal written communication um mouth to mouth very important in portugal i agree and um i think it's hard it's very hard to understand that if you're coming from a different country especially one um i can, you know i can speak for the uk having lived there for quite a while but also i know people in the us feel the same we do everything so anonymously now you know we do it online or we do it on our phones or something like that um and portugal it's still that personal touch is um so important and often it's hard to do something unless you actually go through someone else but it is um for people moving it is a little bit of a sort of um something that you have to learn and, and get used to because you assume it's going to be like what you're used to. Um, so then the next question I have is um, are whether rentals are typically furnished or unfurnished? 
So typically you can find most of the rentals unfurnished. So there's no furniture at all. What you can have, it's a equipped kitchen that most of the things happen um, with a fridge, uh, a dishwasher, um, the stove, the oven. Um, this you can, you can easily uh, find it, uh, but the rest of the furniture, most of them uh, don't have it. Uh, but now... Um, there's a, a trend uh, for those that uh, also want to uh, rent for, for a year. And normally people that are looking for properties uh, for a year um, don't want to, to buy the, the furniture or they want to, to be here to, to get to know the country and then buy it in the, in the future. So more and more you can, you can see properties that uh, have some, some furniture. But even though you only have like a, or a couch and a table, uh, a bed and um, uh, a wardrobe, but uh, nothing more like, uh, like that. Um, but you can, you, when you're uh, planning to, to come or planning to, to find uh, rentals in, in Portugal, keep in mind that most of them are not going to have uh, uh, furniture. And uh, but this is something that uh, we can negotiate at the moment. Uh, you can explain again, like Frederick was saying, when you talk with the landlord, can explain. Okay, I'm being here for for a year. Um, maybe if I buy it uh, some furniture and put it, you can you can keep the furniture, something like that. Um, but yeah, most of the 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 properties uh, don't have uh, uh, furniture. And then in terms of paying rent, um, is this something that would get taken out of my bank account each month or would I pay it by check or are landlords open to different options? Um, I mean, you basically can pay them however it, uh, they, they want. You can pay by bank check, which is not very typical in, 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 in Portugal, not like the US or the US, uh, I think it used to be quite typical. I don't know. Still, I, I studied in in the 90s, so um, there was still very, very typical. Um, the, the safest way is to uh, a transfer, a bank transfer. Um, then you also don't don't forget it. Uh, you can also pay cash, but there are also cash limits. So everything less than 3,000 euros, it's uh, legit. Everything above, it's illegit. Um, I mean, it's also quite high amount. Um, but the best way and probably most common way is to make a, make a bank transfer. Okay, and that's um, probably the simplest for, for both parties. There is a, qu a few questions there sort of coming in related to furniture. Um, what you were saying about people coming in, they might only be there for a year or two. They're looking for an economical way to furnish it. So um, one person has asked whether furniture can be rented. I understand this is a service sometimes in other countries. Uh, I haven't come across it um, too much in Portugal. Have you uh, seen it? Renting, I, no. Renting furniture, no. I mean, I've never seen it. No, I mean, there's a Swedish company that is probably worldwide operating. Um, Portugal, though, um, there's a lot of secondhand um, stores where you can buy furniture depending on your own taste. Um, you can also, as Helena said, you can ask the landlords um, because sometimes they have furniture. But that's something you can arrange. Um, uh yeah, but it's not very different, like to to other countries. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, besides the renting part. Yeah. Um, and have you come across um renters insurance in Portugal? Is this something that people can get, and would you recommend them doing getting it? Uh, you can um, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you can do it, but you're not obliged to do it. Um, the 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 owner of the property has to have fire insurance. Um, that's the the standard. Um, me being a risk averse person, I always have insurance for myself. You can close it. You just put it in the contract that you also close a, a multi risco, which is the structural and also the 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 interior, the um, the equipment protection. Um, I don't know what the technical term is in, in English, but uh, um, you can definitely have it. You're probably talking about in a normal case, 200, 300 euros per year. Um, every problem is put aside. Um, so I would recommend to do it. Um, you can close it. It's not, it's not an obligation. 
Perfect. And in terms of renting a house versus renting an apartment, are there any differences that people need to be aware of? Uh, does it follow for um, firstly the sort of T0, T1 um, sort of setup? Yes, correct. Um, there is no, uh, in terms of renting it himself, there is no drift difference. Um, when you rent an apartment, it's the same as renting a, a house with a contract, everything. Uh, I believe that the main differences between the house and an apartment are the rules that the condominium can have. Because when you are renting an apartment, you you cannot forget that there are other people living in the in the building. So there are certain rules that uh, uh, that you need to to have and um that you can also have problems with uh with the landlord uh so having a, a nice environment uh with uh, with your neighbors and respecting other people that are living in the in the building it's very it, it's mandatory um when you're renting a, a house uh the only thing it's the maintenance that uh, that you're going to have maybe the utilities are going to be a little bit more um higher but in terms of, uh, uh, and maybe it could be easier to get uh, pets, these type of things, you have more privacy. Um, but in terms of uh, contract himself, there is no um, difference uh, in, in doing it. Okay, now a lot of people renting are basically just looking for a way to get their rental to satisfy the D7 or D8 requirements. So they're looking at renting an Airbnb or potentially having a six month contract and you know then getting out of that and then really thinking about where they want to live. All right, so given that you cover um, visas as well, um, is it a requirement to get a 12 month contract um, with a sort of standard lease or could it, someone look at an Airbnb or a shorter term rental? Um, you need to have proof of residency when you apply, um, mm -hmm. which means, and that's always a question people ask, you need to have the rental contract uh, already closed and probably active when you do the application. You can just say, okay, apply and then then, then the rent a place. Uh, the minimum by law is 12 months. You can close a, a contract for six months, but it will automatically enlarge to 12 months. So that's the minimum. Um, but you can also, for example, if the the application would fail and if you do it right, I mean, it's not rocket science. We also help with this kind of process at D8 or D7. There's no reason to fail because um, everything can be checked up front. Um, but you can also cancel the contract. Um, there are certain periods, depending on the length of the contract that you close, that you can get out of the contract. So even if you close the contract for 12 months and potentially would fail, you can also try to get out of the contract earlier. Yeah. Perfect. But if you close for six months, it's valid 12. So it's, it's uh, the, that's the minimum period. And I understand for the sort of visa applications, you need um, a contract that has been registered with finances that's sort of officially registered. How can you be certain that um, it has been registered there? I think you mentioned earlier something about receipts. Yes, correct. So um, when you pay uh, the rent, um, the landlord needs to, to send you the, the receipt. But um, you also, if you want to make sure that uh, the contract uh, is registered in finances, the landlord can request or can can access uh, to approve that uh, has been already registered in uh, in finances and then send it uh, to you. But uh, at the moment that you receive the receive, you're going to see that it's uh, autoridad tributaria. So you're going to see that it's registered. Okay, and now you mentioned earlier that places like um, Lisbon and Porto and other parts of the country, very popular at the moment, um, properties seem to be going within a couple of days, sometimes even less. What are your sort of recommendations for people who are trying to rent from overseas? They don't really have the means to come and view somewhere in that short a time frame. Um, I mean, first of all, you can still rent. This is not the, the issue. I mean, it's not that everything is gone. Um, I think within the time period of maybe four, six weeks, you can also get the entire process done. Um, uh, and I mean, we've done this also with a lot of clients from abroad um, and they always were, we're happy also with results. So it, it's, it's feasible also from abroad. So you don't, you don't actually have to come. I think it's even better to do it from abroad um, 
because when you arrange an online viewing, um, you're more flexible. It's not like buying where you say, okay, let's see five houses there and uh, on Monday morning and five in the afternoon. It's usually a bit more scattered. And if you come with, I mean, which always helps um, um, because we mentioned this in the beginning, uh, Portugal Lisbon are very, uh, Port and Lisbon are very popular, but there's a huge spread of prices. There are many areas where you can, uh, if uh, the apartment is 1,200, 1,007 euros, uh, Lisbon Porto, you can get the same apartment in urban and less populated areas, but still in cities, beautiful cities, maybe for 400, 500 euros. Um, and if you're just coming over to have a good time, enjoy authentic places. Um, I mean, Port and Lisbon have their advantages, but I always encourage um, people to, to take a tour, although it's a small country, there's it's you have huge differences the south the algarve the doro area the national park the 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 atlantic coast um the the cities um big big differences and if you really would like to stay for a longer period of time it's they're great smaller smaller tier uh, house mid-tier cities where you can enjoy really uh, a great time in portugal and also less less costs uh, and there's also less pressure, you know, in Porto Lisbon, where everyone wants to stay, of course, somebody puts something in the market for 600 euros, uh, a nice 60 square meter or 600 square foot apartment, it's gone, you know, don't, mm -hmm. don't try to even call, you know. Perfect. And I think some people were commenting about the size of Portugal base. And uh, you mentioned it as well, Frederick, it is a small country. So if you rent somewhere in the middle of the country, you can then use that as your base to explore the rest of the country and decide where you want to live. Yeah. Let's see. But in terms of coming to Portugal, if someone did do that and they were looking, you know, at rentals, they saw one that they liked on Monday. Could they sign the documents and have everything um, registered within, um, you know, within a day or two, or does it take longer than that? Um, the the part of registering the the rental agreement doesn't uh, take too long. Uh, the landlord can sign it, and at this day, it's uh, they can go to finances or even online. They can register the the contract. Uh, the thing to find uh, a rental, it's um, if you know the area, if you have uh, everything that uh, that you um that your that suits your your needs uh, so this requires a little bit more of uh, time i always advise for people when they are coming to to portugal or they want to live to in portugal um at least 4 weeks in advance so that uh, you can make some some viewings you can compare the prices you can get to know the the neighborhoods even though that it's a, a rental uh, you need to enjoy the way that uh, you're living um the the neighbors uh, the neighborhoods in terms of transports and everything you need to you need to to get that uh, that feeling so at least uh, 4 weeks in advance so that you can prepare yourself you can come and make the viewings you can make the uh, the offer on the on the property uh, then to see the contract with time um because uh, the portuguese also like we were saying here in this uh, in this webinar uh, the portuguese like to to talk and to get to know uh, the people so uh, it's important that the contract it's very clear so this requires a little bit more of time and then in the end when you have everything done sign the contract uh, in this at the same day the the owner can register in 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 finances Perfect. And we were talking a little bit earlier about sort of um, what comes in a furnished or non-furnished apartment. But one thing that people always ask about um, first is um, AC or air, air conditioning. The The second one is um, dryers. Um, in Europe, we uh, tend to dry our clothes outside if we're lucky enough to have sunshine or inside if we're unfortunate enough to live further north. Um, how would I go about finding somewhere, first of all, with air conditioning and second, if possible, with a dryer? You have yeah, to check just... the... Yeah. So no, just uh, just one thing from from my side. It's that uh, you need the sun and you need the wind. Okay. okay. That's, that's, uh... <laughs> you need both. <laughs> exactly. You need you need some wind and some some air um, from from uh, from the property to to dry uh, the clothes. Uh, but sorry, Frederick, I interrupt you. Uh, just uh, one thing that I was <laughs> thinking. No, that's that's great. I mean, these things, air condition, it's not very 
typical um, also dryers. Um, you can check the announcement, uh, but if it's not listed there, it's probably also not existing. There are also mobile versions from, from air conditioned. They range between, I don't know, 150, 300 euros, depending on, on, on how big you want them. So I think if it's really an issue and you like the apartment, you either get the, the, the mobile solutions yourself and then resell them or, or keep them. Um, a dryer, uh, maybe try the, the this version to, to put it outside <laughs> or dry it. I mean, it, it stays the same. Um, um, and if you still think it's important to have a dryer, dryer, but you need to also have the access because the hot air has to go at some place and most cases don't even have it. So, uh, um, yeah, check. Oh. Okay. Um, very, very helpful information there. Um, what about documents then? Um, we, I think you uh, put those in your presentation. You mentioned um, the things like the NIF and that. Um, ID. Um, briefly, how does someone go about getting a NIF number if they don't already have one? Well, there are two ways to get them. You can get them online. Uh, we also offer this service um, takes about three, four days. Um, if, um, but let's be honest, the, the cheapest way is you come to Portugal, um, you go to a, a finance department. Um, most of them are walk-on. Um, Sometimes you don't pay. Sometimes you pay a lot, uh, 12 euros. Um, you walk in, you put yourself in, in line and then leave with your NIF number. It's you, What you need is um, proof of residency and your ID. Um, if your ID already has the proof of residency, you don't need to have it. Um, if it doesn't have it, for example, bring um, a bill uh, that is in your name and your current address. That, that's enough. Yeah. And don't uh, I mean you have to be careful um if you register the if you bring an address already a Portuguese address you automatically will be considered a tax citizen in Portugal so um which maybe you anyway become but depends on the visa um so uh, um make sure that when you register for the NIF um you always have a a foreign address in the beginning, and then you can change it um, whenever you would like to move on a permanent base to Portugal. Perfect. That's um, that's really, really helpful. Um, were you going to say something else, uh, Elena? No, I was uh, saying that the same of, as, as Frederick. Okay. And earlier on, we said um, that utilities are normally in the renter's name. Um, but sometimes they could be in the landlord's name or included within the price. Um, for those that do want it all included in one price, how would they go about getting that? Normally, when you're you're uh, searching for included um, utilities, uh, it says on the um, on the ad uh, the information it's already there. But again, it's uh, contacting the the landlord when when you make the the viewing or in case that uh, you. Uh, are able to to contact uh, the landlord uh, before um, asking if you can arrange that uh, not uh, sending the um, or not transferring the utilities into uh, the tenant's name, but to keep it and then adapt uh, the price of the rent in case it's not uh, it's not included. So it's something that uh, we can negotiate and 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 see if they can they can accept. Maybe so. Uh, number of reference I would always calculate maybe with 120 euros I mean it clearly depends how, how you live um, but uh, 120 euros internet water electricity should cover it um, due to the fact that many apartments don't have central heating maybe gas heating um, people tend to cover the, the two months where it's a little bit more ugly like December January with electrical heaters which can be a good choice, but um, you will feel the pain a bit later because they also consume quite a, a bit. I, I don't know how it, the, the prices are in the US, but for example, compared to other European countries, especially Germany, um, prices are quite quite low, but still um, that's, that's the only challenge. You have to see how you heat the property, which can have an, a more detrimental influence on your, on your bill. Uh, point of reference is usually 120 euros. I think that's a, a very helpful number for people to understand. Um, so uh, talking about costs then, and I know this is a very, very broad question, but a few people have asked 
what, how much does it cost to rent an apartment in Portugal, which I'm sure you, so you sort of alluded to the smaller cities there, they can be what half the cost of Lisbon, potentially even a third the cost of Lisbon. So I'm, do you have any idea across the, the country what, what people might end up paying? Um, it's a little bit difficult because it will depend what the type of property that people uh, want. Uh, I've seen one bedroom apartments for 2000, uh, for example, but uh, it's it's a penthouse or it has a rooftop, has a big terrace, something. But uh, normally, if we are talking about uh, one bedroom apartment um, that doesn't have AC or uh, any uh, this uh, this amenities. Um, it's uh, it's not a new newest building, uh, but has uh, has good conditions for you to to live. Uh, for example, in Lisboa, it can cost between one thousand two hundred to one thousand five hundred. Uh, in Porto, it's it's a little bit less, so you can have more uh, as uh, for your money. Uh, if you go a little bit more north in in Braga, uh, we can find properties between seven hundred nine hundred uh, more or less. Um, um, in in Aveiro, that it's not so far from from Porto, uh, between eight hundred one thousand. Um, these four examples for uh, um, a one bedroom, um, but it depends. It depends a little bit what uh, what you want uh, when it's a new building um, with uh, I don't know a closed condominium with a, a shared pool or has a gym. These type of things that uh, will increase and and something that could be. Um, uh, uh, very important for for the U.S. Uh, citizens. It's the uh, AC that normally don't have and could increase a little bit more uh, the price. Um, but it's more or less this uh, this price uh, ranges um, at this uh, at this point in Portugal. Um, um, another question that I guess asked a lot is whether people can sign a contract to begin at a later date. So this is a big concern for people who are moving over here. They know they need to rent an apartment or a house, um, um, but they don't want to pay for the months that they're not using it, which is understandable. Um, but is this is this possible? Is it feasible in any way? No. Um, okay. <laughs> it, it's a downside. I know we get this asked uh, a, a lot. Um, uh, I mean, if you know somebody, there are other contracts that you can, but uh, um, it's not renting, but it's it's borrowing an apartment in a way. Um, uh, but um, the straight, most forward way to, to also for the, the, the clerk that works on your visa application is here, I have a rent contact. Um, no. And you need to be paying already. Yeah. Uh, the downside is because you also have to turn on your passport. Um, there are a little bit ways to, to, work around um, because you either keep your passport maybe for three months. Sometimes you also can give a, a certified copy for a certain period of time because you need to travel. Um, but um, there, there will be a gap where you, uh, maybe your family can use it if you come with a family um, um, because they can maybe move and you put them in the, the, the visa later, but there will be a certain period of time where we can not use the, the property. Yeah. But that's something you can also reduce quite significantly if you time application and rental contract um, in the best manner. No. I think I think that's understandable from the landlord's point of view. If you say, I want my contract to begin in four months' time, it's hard for them to find someone to rent just for four months. Um, they would then go to another person who's willing to rent immediately and rent for 12 months. So I can see it from the landlord's point of view as well. Yeah, and um, timing is usually very, very fast. So if a person wants to rent in, uh, or if you look now what is in the market, people will probably start renting October, November. But if they want to uh, rent in February, you don't have this kind of office currently in the market because the, the market is so, so fast. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a very helpful thing that you're speaking about there, which is timing, because people are thinking about when do I move to Portugal? A good um, way to think about it is sort of when's the best time when are rentals most likely to be up? I know from having spent a lot of time in the Algarve, for example, once you start to get close to summer, it's very, very hard to find rentals because people are thinking I could rent it out to tourists or something along those lines. Do you have particular times when you think it's it's easier to find rentals for people? 
um, I from from my experience, uh, I believe that uh, the best timings. It's first of all avoid August, December, and uh, April. Uh, okay. April because we have uh, lots of uh, national holidays and most of the Portuguese just uh, like to spend uh, time with uh, with their families and they are not available to um, to show the properties and everything. In August, it's also very complicated. Like you're saying, most of the people just uh, try to to rent uh, during the the summertime and most of them are also not available to to show the. Um, the properties and December it's December for the Portuguese so you have the Christmas and the end of the year and uh, people just uh, want to um, want to enjoy uh, with the family um, as well um, but the best timings uh, I believe that uh, from February until June um, um, but not uh, April and then October November also uh, very good uh, uh, months to to come and it's not that it's easier but it's more calm and you can can see things with uh, with time it's also the end of the the summer also in September school um, starts in Portugal uh, so in the second week of September, after that, uh, um, we can see more possibilities uh, showing up on the on the market, um, and you can see things uh, more clearly. Okay, that's uh, that is really really helpful for someone thinking I'm going to move to Portugal in a year or two. Now they sort of get an idea of of when they might want to think about looking. Um, you mentioned earlier negotiating rent prices. You said that. Probably that was a little bit difficult now due to popularity. Um, can you sort of explain like how someone would um, negotiate this and what is possible and what isn't possible? It, uh, it will depend. Uh, normally the, the price, uh, negotiating the price, most of the landlords are not very willing to, to drop uh, the prices. Um, and due to several uh, reasons, but what you can negotiate, it's... For example, includes the utilities or include at least uh, one of it, uh, includes uh, uh, furniture um, or some other amenities that uh, that the place or the property has, and you can and you can get it. Uh, but in terms of uh, of prices, it's it's very difficult to to drop them. Um, the only thing that you can do is basically to add uh, more things to that uh, to that price. Okay. That's helpful information um, and very practical too. Um, what about rent increases? Because um, some people will be coming to their rental just for a year and then they might think about buying something, but people might decide, actually, I quite like renting. I like not having uh, um, the challenges of owning a house, but I'm worried that the landlord could increase the rent significantly. Are there caps on this in Portugal? Yes, this is regulated. Um, there's a central percentage in which the 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 rents can be increased. It's not up to the land. The landlord cannot just say, you know why? Um, I think 15% would be nice. This doesn't happen. So next year, I think it's 2.15. It's around six, 2%. Yeah, 2%, which will be the increase of the, the rent. Yeah, So it's uh, regulated. Um, uh, you have to keep in mind that even if the landlord doesn't increase the rent, they can do it retrospectively for three years. So if you enter and live in the apartment for the next three years, um, there's no increase. Uh, then they can come and say, you know what, I would like to raise and also include the, the last rent uh, increases that were um, published by the, by the government. Okay, well, that will come as a as a sigh of relief, and I imagine that is more with contracts that are registered, and you have an official contract rather than a sort of, um, let's say, gentleman's agreement on what the rent should be. Um, let's see what other um questions we have here. So, um, building and condominium fees. Um, this is something that you might have in a an apartment block. Um, are these usually included in the rent? Are they paid separately, and are they the responsibility of the landlord or the tenant? Uh, included landlord, uh, okay. obligation. Yeah. Perfect. Um, now. 
do landlords receive tax breaks if they have a longer contract? I'm guessing the person who asked that is wondering if I uh, sign up for a five-year contract, am I potentially able to get a better deal than a one-year contract? Yeah, they definitely get it. Um, this is part of a, a, um, a something that was released last year. Usually they pay 25%. So welcome to Europe. It's... Um, um, it's quite a bit. They can re reduce until five percent, um, depending on the 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 uh, the time period. Um, I don't know. It depends a bit if the landlord would like to do it. Um, but yes, um, there are certain what do you call it steps to reduce it, depending on the the length. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of breaking contracts, um, this is another important thing people want to, they obviously want to rent a place, but sometimes they might only want to rent it for a short period of time while they decide to buy or figure out where they want to live. How much uh, notice would someone normally have to give? That also depends on the the the, the, the length the of the contract. Off. Yeah. Okay. It, the minimum 60 days can be up to 120 days. Yeah. Um, what sometimes people underestimate, even when you would like to buy, first of all, it takes a, a while to search also. Um, but even if you find a property, um, usually you sign a, a pre-contract and afterwards a deed, but this can sometimes take time because there's a doc in it that needs to be updated and the notary will not uh, do the deed with it. So uh, um, a purchase usually ranges easily between to six to uh, three to six months sometimes even longer um depending if the city hall passes out the document fast or not so um i think it's also good to, to have a little bit of flexibility what i think it's also important to know is that even you as a tenant you have the right to stay in an apartment or also house um up to three months so um the the, the landlord cannot oppose this renovation so if you have a 12 month rental contract and you think it's a great apartment, you can stay two more years um, or you can leave depending on um, uh, um, the, the curfew that you have to give. Um, so as a tenant, you have quite a, a, a good flexibility and I, I would also take advantage of this, especially if you'd like to buy later on. Uh, because only if you really know, okay, the deed will be, on the date X, Y, um, you can easily then uh, terminate also the contract. Don't plan too short. Otherwise, you get the problems, maybe. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and you, uh, Pearls of Portugal, I know you offer a property buying service as well. So if people go with you for their rental, then it would be a natural um, progression then to go on for um, purchase with you as well. Um, in terms of breaking the contract, then um, let's say you get into a place, you rent in Lisbon, you decide, actually, I don't want to live in the city anymore. I want to live in the countryside, but I've just signed a one year lease. Um, what would sort of be the minimum amount of time? Some people are asking the questions about a sort of one third of the rental contract, whether there's a rule there, if that's possible to break at that point. Yeah, correct. Uh, when you just sign the lease and uh, for for one year, you need at least uh, to uh, complete one third of the um, of the contract, and then uh, you can uh, uh, give already the the notice to to the landlord that uh, you want to um, to leave. And then, in terms of. Um... We were getting back to visas. We were saying people are typically renting for a visa. They know now that there's a quite a high chance they'll have to pay for months where they might not be there. What happens if the visa is denied? Is it possible to put some kind of clause into their rental contract that if my visa is denied, I'm I'm able to cancel at that point? Uh, you have to negotiate that with the landlord, um, which they most highly will not accept. Because they say, okay, that that's your problem. First of all, you can get out of the contract, um, but um, I mean, we're doing this now for quite a time. In a normal case, if you have a clean criminal record, if you have, uh, and that's something a good company will check up front before you do the application and even do the rent contract. Do you have uh, enough proof of uh, passive income, active income? If um, this is something 
you can check up front and a good company will not let you rent a, or sign a rental contract if there are any doubts to 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 proceed and if you fulfill the requirements you also get the visa yeah perfect so, um, um, so practically speaking the risk of being denied if you do it good or in a normal way is um, close to zero or should be zero yeah, that's yeah. Okay, so work with um a good company like yourselves who can who have the experience and know whether um an application is likely to be accepted. No. Uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense as well. Um, I do think yeah, I'm always surprised at um people when they try to do this themselves. Um, it is sort of like a stack of dominoes. If you get the visa bit wrong, then everything else can kind of crash. So this is this is the bit you really really want to get right. After that, you can you're free to make a few more mistakes and not have such big consequences. Um, talking about deposits, we mentioned that the the sort of um amounts that people normally have to pay. In terms of getting them back, that's always a you know a concern that you have as a as a renter. Um, some countries have deposit protection schemes and laws um, regarding this. What what about Portugal? How easy is it to get a deposit back? It's not that uh, that it's easy or not. If it's on the contract, that's why it's very important for you to have uh, rental uh, agreements. Uh, well done and uh, with uh, with a lot of intention uh, because for example if you want to to finish the the contract and you don't want to continue you need to give those months uh, in advance what you can tell the the landlord it's saying i don't pay uh, more rent because i already paid the deposit so uh, can you can count with those uh, months so that's one of the ways for you to protect about it um what i always advise as well uh, it's for you to to film the property to get some pictures what it's uh, initially uh, especially if they has uh, furniture um uh, and make sure that uh, when you deliver the the property it's uh, it's exactly the same of course that uh, when you are there and living there there are some things that uh, uh, with time um can uh, can you can see that it's used um but it's not uh, it's not uh, the main reason for you don't have the deposit uh, back uh, and it's not like uh, there's a tradition not to give the deposit back i think it's like everywhere um as elena said um we usually also sign um a handover um contract what was in the department uh, was the stage taking pictures um um, also, um, when you give the 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 the, the apartment back, um, having usage, how to call it, um, signs or is, this is also normal, um, and in in the normal cases or a normal landlord will also give back uh, the the deposit because they don't want the, to have the trouble. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Okay, you get good landlords and bad landlords everywhere. I yeah. think. Yeah, but the better you prepare. Um, I mean, you stay in the apartment for two years. Um, you don't know really what was this, the state, so take pictures. But that's something we also help. That's why we also have the client area. People can have it. You can leave everything there, pictures and so on. Um, and then when you cancel the contract, uh, you have a good base to also argue. But um, we also rented quite a bit and never had really problems getting money back. Huh? And is the landlord um, required to return your deposit within a certain time period? Or is this something that you should have written into the contract? Correct. It needs to be in the contract. The landlord needs to refund the, the deposit within 30 days, 60 days, whatever it's uh, uh, what it's negotiated and agreed with both parties. But normally we always include that uh, clause in, in our rental contract. Perfect. Um, quite a few people have asked about your fees for your services. Um, they're obviously thinking it would be useful to have that um, that protection when they go and rent somewhere. I'm just going to drop another link um, to uh, your call in the chat. I think it's easier if people just get in touch with you directly, talk about what they're looking for, and then you can address that with them personally. Um, but I want to move on to working from home. Um, there's two types of working from home, I guess, these days. There's the people that work in front of a laptop, um, and then there's the people who are sort of conducting business um, from home. They might have clients um, coming in and out. 
Do you need a specific ag agreement for either of those two types of work? Um, from what I understand, the second one is very different to the first one. Yeah, I mean, this depends what you're doing. I mean, if you work from home, if you're a software developer and you work from home, no one will tell you, hey, um, it cannot be this. Um, uh, really depends. I mean, the it's a house which is made for living and everything that breaches the um, the purpose, I don't know, noise, smell, whatever, you probably get, get problems. Um, so I think it's, it's a little bit common sense. Um, most... Um, uh, industries, however, in Portugal also require you to do your job, and that's specifically set in the laws to do it in a uh, in a uh, in a place that is also made for this in an industry uh, building or something like this. For example, if you own a real estate company, the law says you cannot run a real estate um, company from a private house. Uh, the your representation your office where you receive people has to be in a an office building you know um so and that's probably also the case if you get a license um but i don't know as i said if, if you're a developer if you i don't know do um, a, um call center or whatever everything that is normal in terms of noise level and something like this like a normal usage i think it's not really a problem yeah. If you give piano lessons, I don't know, maybe <laughs> something less. Yeah. Um, if, if your students are good, I think it would be okay. But if they're all beginners, <laughs> you might not. The you can ask for like money. That. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what about subletting your accommodation while you're away? Is this typically allowed? No. Um, okay. You have to get permission, but by law, it's not. Okay. Then we touched upon sort of wear and tear of apartments it's uh, it's kind of understandable that if you live in a place long enough there will be some amount of um damage sometimes this is just you know basic things like um wear and tear as we mentioned and sometimes something might go wrong like the you know the washing machine might break if that's included there might be a plumbing issue who is responsible for these sort of costs so all the structural uh, problems are from from the the landlord's uh, responsibility. So um, if you are in the property and the property starts getting uh, with mold or something that it's not very good for for your health, um, you can inform or you should inform uh, the landlord saying that uh, this is not very good for our health and for them to uh, repair. Um, most of the times, it's it's something that comes from from outside and start uh, coming inside, uh, but they should uh, take care of uh, that. Um, especially because when we are in the building and something breaks outside, uh, it's the condominium actually, uh, the, the responsibility. So therefore, it's it's the landlord responsibility. But imagine that you're using the, the property and you break something, uh, the stove or something that you, you break. Uh, this is something that uh, you should uh, repair um the tenant uh, should have that uh, responsibility uh, but again if if the landlord says okay the fridge it's something that uh, i don't need it's it's up to you um and it's it's on the the property but in the meantime the fridge uh, doesn't work anymore um basically the landlord gave the fridge by by good faith and uh, should not be responsible to to get that uh, fixed um but it will depend a little bit on the communication with uh, with the landlord. But uh, everything that needs to be structurally repaired, like plumbing, electricity, uh, these types of things that uh, belongs to the property himself, it's uh, from the landlord's uh, responsibility. Anything else that uh, it's uses or bad uses of the, the property, it's the responsibility of the, the tenant. If I start breaking everything, I could say, yeah, uh, just pay it now. I want a new one. Yeah. It's not like that, that things um, work. And uh, suppose something happens with the plumbing. You mentioned that's typically the landlord's responsibility and the landlord isn't solving the issue. What kind of recourse does a tenant, like what should they do in that situation? Um, first, if the if the, the tenant informed the landlord and the landlord is not uh, taking care of, of that, uh, what our advice is, it's never start, uh, never stop 
paying the rent. Okay, uh, this is one of the main things that uh, you should know. Um, one of the things that uh, you could go it's uh, to a lawyer um, to to have them uh, a restriction or something that uh, they need to to fix it. Um, we have something that is special for rental uh, courts. Okay, that we call it julgados de de pash, uh, that normally help. Uh, the tenants and the landlords to reach uh, uh, an agreement because the landlord can also argument uh, bad uses or something. But Jogados de, de Pache, it's a special rental um, court that uh, can also help uh, the tenants um, to make sure that uh, the landlord keep their, their rights and not being... Um, violated um the other thing that uh, you can go it's a uh, normal uh, court but this might be a little bit more uh, expensive and take a little bit more of time and lastly what you can do it's to go to caixa geral deposits that basically it's a bank uh, a portuguese bank uh, and you can uh, speak with them so that uh, they can create an account so instead of paying the landlord directly you can start transferring the the rent uh, to that uh, special account until uh, the landlord fix the the problem that they need to fix Okay, that is that's very interesting. Um, very very helpful to to know that. Um, so one, I'm getting the impression that it's very very helpful to have specific things written down. Obviously, there's some general renters' laws, but then there's specific things that you want included, like how many days the deposit uh, should be turned returned back within. Um, if I sign a contract in Portugal, is it going to be in Portuguese? Um, most likely, and is there any way that I can get it in, in English or my native language? What we do for our clients uh, when when we are uh, helping to get the, the lease agreement, we always do in Portuguese and in English, okay? okay. Uh, so that uh, um, the person that it's also signing um, can have the understanding what it, what they are signing. So it's it's one of the, the rights. Even though that uh, for the tax authority, what it's valid, it's the Portuguese uh, side. Um, it's very important for you to have the English version for, for your understanding. But it's not mandatory. Okay, it's it's something that uh, we do, and uh, we always try to to help. You can always find someone that can translate you the the contract. But having in both uh, languages uh, could be in English, could be in German, um, uh, could be in French, with the <laughs> the the language that uh, that you prefer. Always do in both uh, uh, versions. I think, yeah, it would be very, very helpful to see it in your later language, even if you were using something like Google Translate, it would be easy to to miss a word or two. Uh, somebody has asked there whether I'm going to include your contact information. Absolutely. After this is finished, I will um, send out the uh, contact information to everyone so that they can get in contact with you. Um, let's see, uh, we've uh, come to the end of all the questions that were asked throughout um, uh, in the weeks coming up to this, but I see there's some new ones have come in. Um, I'll just run through those quickly. I know we've obviously covered quite a lot so far, but we'll see if we can do one or two more. Um, is it common to list apartments as smoking or not smoking? Uh, this is more common for you to um, find in short-term rentals, uh, this type of uh, properties uh, that are secure more for uh, um, short stays. Uh, for a long term, it's not something that uh, uh, people write in, in the ad or... Um, of course, that um, when you met the, the landlord, uh, the landlord can say, OK, please don't smoke here because of this, because of that. If you want to smoke, you can go outside, you can go to the balcony. Um, it depends a little bit um, on the, the landlord's uh, situation, because uh, I don't know if uh, he can control of that or the neighbors are going to say, be careful because it's, uh, it's the smelling too much of smoke in, in your apartment. Uh, be careful, this type of things. It's a more smokers friendly country. You see more <laughs> people also smoking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. If you, if you smoke, it's a good place to come. If you don't, um, 
yeah, maybe not so much. Um, what about local council charges for um, rubbish collection and other local services? Um, I know they have different names in, in different countries, but the idea is the same. Do um, the Does the landlord or the tenant have to pay for these? For the, to put the rubbish uh, outside? Yeah, to basically to get it um, collected. It's a it's a public uh, uh service. You don't need you know you don't need to to pay it. There are some um properties that I've seen. They have a place where they can put the garbage and um a special uh, place so um that you can put it there and you can make uh you can recycle and you have the all the the beans and you, you have everything. But uh or you can go outside and you have the the normal things and and you can you can put it outside. It's not paid but uh, you have to do it yourself and to recycle yeah. if there is a possibility to do it it's a public service uh, depends a little bit on the municipality or for example if you have a single house but um, due to the fact that it's a hot country the uh, trash is removed quite fast um, for example I mean my mother-in-law when she she puts all, each day for example a small bike in front of the house and they come and collect it um, uh, in that area, they have a small surcharge, but this is covered then by the landlord. But it, it's a public service, um, especially in the cities, all uh, trash cans and so on, where you just leave the, your stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see what other uh, questions we have there. So um, have you come, uh, we've talked a lot about renting apartments or houses. Obviously, some people rent rooms as well, a little less common when you're, um, you know, an older adult, but it's, it still happens. First of all, is this something that uh, you can help with? And second of all, have you come across people doing this for a visa application? Um, I mean, it, you need a, a place officially where you stay. Um, so you can also rent a, a, a room if you'd like to. Um, and you can also close a contract um, for, for, for a room. Yeah. And that's also what we would help with. Um, it's not so typical. Um, I think it's more um, a student thing to, to do. But um, if somebody wants to come over and share an apartment, of course, it's also possible. Yeah. OK, and some people have come across rental listings that have a price, but also states make an offer. Perhaps this was on um, uh, one particular website. Is this something that you've come across before? Yeah, the people are always open to, to get <laughs> offers and um, always open to, to negotiate. If they accept it or not, uh, it's uh, it's other thing. Um, but um, yeah, you can always make a make an offer and, and see and see what the, what they say. Yeah, but as, I mean, uh, it's I don't know. I can say if you approach things with common sense, if somebody tell, tells you, for example, I have a spectacular apartment, see view, blah blah blah, uh, for five hundred euros downtown Porto, um, make an offer. You know, you should be a little bit careful. Um, I think there's not a lot of scamming, but there is scamming definitely. Um, um, if somebody wants to if, you know, make an offer, pay me up front, and all those kind of things. Um, um, but I think that's a typical thing everywhere. Uh, I've seen it also in other European places. Um, but if you approach this with maybe also a little bit of skepticism, um, which is normal anywhere you go to, and uh, if you don't leave your brain uh, in the shower, I think you mm -hmm. can definitely build out this kind of things. Yeah. So. Okay. Um... I think we're probably coming to towards the end of it. Um, given that you've helped so many people find rentals in Portugal, is there any sort of closing uh, notes that you want to leave people with? Um, maybe also don't, uh, I wouldn't say think too much, but avoid too much and enjoy the process. Um, it's something um, that has been done before. We've done it many times. So I think it's part of a great step that you can do coming to Portugal um and if you do it with all the senses and maybe also get professional help i think it's also quite a safe process and will open the door to a new phase in 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 life so um i think the most important i think message is to enjoy it i think it's a it's a great step um don't worry too much because it can be taken care of you know, it's 
I think that's um that's great advice. A lot of the questions that people had here about finding the right property, leases, landlords, all that sort of stuff. It can be helped by working with a, a company, as you mentioned, that knows what it's, they're doing, that speaks yeah. Portuguese, um, that has that experience and knows what to look for. And then you take the stress out of it of wondering whether you've made a mistake. So I really appreciate um, you both coming on here and answering all of these questions. I'm going to send the link of the recording out to everybody because I know some people like to re-listen to get everything. And I'll also send the contact details for those that want to book that um, consultation with you to discuss finding a rental here. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much for coming. We'll need to have you back to discuss thank other areas of having us. property. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. It was a pleasure to to meet you. Thank you so much and um, hopefully see everybody else for a, another Portugalist webinar another time.